So this is going to be traditional trend lines. This is the way they're classically taught, whether you're going to become a a certified technical analyst, a CTA designation in the U.S., whether you're taking a course. This is the way they are traditionally taught and originally taught in a gentleman by the name of John Murphy, who wrote 40 years ago what we consider to be the Bible of technical analysis. It's basically technical analysis of markets by John Murphy. Okay, this is the way it's taught, generally speaking, in that book. So, traditional trend lines. A trend line definition is a line that is drawn over pivot highs or under pivot lows to show the prevailing direction of price. Trend lines are visual representation of support and resistance in any time frame. That's from Investopedia.com. Pivot highs and pivot lows are key turning points in the market and are the same as swing highs or swing lows. I usually call them swings. Um, You can call them pivots, whatever you want. But this is basically the definition of a trend line and the structure that supports it. Trend lines naturally show a trend. If the market is going to continue its trend, the trend line should provide support or resistance to keep that trend going. An upward sloping trend line can provide support for a bullish market. A downward sloping trend line can provide resistance for a bearish market. Again, I know this is fairly rudimentary and review for most of you, but I have to establish this structure to go into the next session next week. So here's an example of an upward sloping trend line providing support. Okay, you can see the three points. Now, one thing I always want to point out, I'll show you on the next slide as well. If that trend line were not drawn here, you would still know it's an uptrend. Okay, same thing on this downtrend. We've got a downward sloping trend line drawn on swing highs. Okay, and it's supporting, it's providing resistance for moves to the upside. You would know this was a downward sloping trend without the trend line, but some things may be in question. For example, I don't think you can see my cursor in this. I can't turn the white part on, but if you look at the far right, yellow highlighted point, okay, you see that the earlier drawn trend line provided resistance for it, all right? In traditional trend line, you need that third point to consider having a trend line at all. In trade trend lines, we don't need that third point. We're going to show you why next week. Swing highs and swing lows. Trend lines naturally connect some swing highs and swing lows. An upward sloping trend line will be connected to swing lows. A downward sloping trend line will be connected to swing highs. Now, it is key that you understand that a traditional trend line that is upward sloping will only connect swing lows. And an upward sloping line that connects swing highs is not a trend line. Okay? That shows itself in channels. Right? We consider an upward sloping trend line that connects swing highs to be a channel target line. Difference between a trend line and a target line, as we just reviewed, the trend lines provide possible support or resistance that would enable the trend to continue. A target line, however, is just a potential target area where the current trend might be forming another swing. Okay, in the case of an upward sloping channel, all right, a target's line is a target area of that channel. A combination of trend lines and target lines form a number of traditional chart patterns like channels or flags. So here's a visual representation. Below you can see that we have an upward sloping trend line connecting swing lows. And up above you can see that we have a target line. Within those two lines, you have a channel. And this channel could be at the end of a longer, larger down move forming a flag right? Um, It could just be a channel you're looking at. These can be horizontal as well, but you want to make sure you don't call those upward sloping trend lines that are connecting swing highs trend lines because they're not, okay? If you break that particular line, you're not reversing or changing trend, okay? The trend stays the same. It's upward sloping. Downward sloping trend lines, it's key that you understand that a traditional trend line that is downward sloping will only connect swing highs. 
A downward sloping line that connects swing lows is not a trend line. We consider a downward sloping line that connects swing lows to be a channel target line. Okay, so we've got a similar example here. You've got a downward sloping line connecting swing highs, and then you've got a downward sloping line connecting swing lows. That is a target line. Now you might adjust the angle of the downward line connecting swing lows, but it does not adjust the steepness of the trend because the trend is defined by the upper line, not the lower line, okay? Slope of a trend line is important. The steeper the trend line, the stronger the trend. You can begin to look for these steep trend lines during very or extremely bullish and bearish swing conditions. And the closer the trend line is to horizontal, the weaker the trend. You may see steep trend lines flatten as the swing highs and swing lows change from very and extremely to moderate and slightly bullish and bearish conditions. Okay, again, this is structurally true. And this is what we talk about in traditional trend lines. Now, broken trend line. When a trend line is broken, it can show a possible change in trend, not a guaranteed change in trend, okay? The change in trend does not necessarily mean a trend reversal will take place. A broken trend line could mean a slowing of the trend. In other words, a steep trend becoming less steep, but still downward sloping. It could mean that the market is moving into a sideways price action or consolidation period as well. All right. So here we see a broken trend line. You have your two, three, your three points that a traditional trend line needs. We get a trend line broken, possible change in trend, but we don't know that yet. And you can see when we get to the next one that the steeper trend line was broken and just formed a less steep trend line, right? Then we get another break over here to the right. So as you're redrawing trend lines, you're redefining the strength of the trend. So if somebody says to you, let's let's say this is a, I don't know, a copper chart up here. You say, well, is this still a really strong downtrend? Well, now it's weakened a little bit, but it's still in a downtrend. That's what that defines, right? Now, drawing traditional trend lines, this is very important for what I'm going to show you guys next week, okay? A traditional trend line is made up of three points, an initiating point, a confirming point, and a validating point, okay? The traditional trend line can have more points than the third points, but you have to have those three to have a trend line. Otherwise, you just have a couple of swing highs or a couple of swing lows. You don't necessarily have a trend. All that's required to draw a trend line is to identify the three points and then connect them with a line. That line connects the three points is the trend line, the line that connects the three. The trend line does not always stop with the third point. Instead, the trend line is drawn into the future to give us a possible resistance or support level if the trend continues at its same strength level. The easiest chart type to draw a trend line in is a line on close chart. Typically, we talk about that as just a line chart, okay? Well, here's an example. Three points of a trend line. you got just a simple line on close chart. So each dot on that chart that form those lines is just a closing price. Here you have an initiating point. Here you have a confirming point. And here you have a validating point. This is a valid traditional trend line. It's not a valid trade trend line, but it is a valid traditional trend line. Here's a real line on closed chart, and you can see how the line, based off of closes, provided support going forward, and it showed a steep trend, a strong uptrend, that remained strong because of the steepness of the line. Okay, so you've got the initiating point all the way to the left. The second red arrow points to a confirming point. The third one points to a validating point, and this trend line ended up being a good area of support moving forward. Here's how you would draw a traditional support trend line on a candlestick chart. Okay, so trend lines are going to be drawn off of lows or highs for the most part. All right, here you have an initiating point, 
a confirming point and a validating point on this particular particular fictional chart. All right. You can get breaks of these trend lines. All right. The closes are more important. We'll talk about that further in the future, but this is what it would look like on a candlestick chart. Here's a downward sloping trend on the candlestick chart. Now notice the difference in steepness. On this chart, the bullish trend is much stronger than on this chart, the bearish trend is. Now sometimes when the trend is changing, okay, when it's flattening rather than reversing, you'll see this sort of steepness go to a flatness. But when it's reversing, you'll see a steep trend get broken and turn into a reversal steep trend to the other side, which also may flatten out, but that's often a clue as to whether it's not a confirmation, but a clue as to whether his trend is changing is the aggressive nature by which the trend is which the trend is broken. That applies to both traditional and trade trend lines. Here's a traditional trend line on an actual candlestick chart. Okay, these two were examples that we created. This is an actual chart. Okay, we took the asset out for obvious reasons. So here you have an initiating point, a confirming point, and a validating point. And in the future, you would look to see if support held at this trend line. Again, that's traditionally. Now, more important notes on trend lines. Higher time frame trend lines are more important than lower time frame trend lines. So if you're drawing trend lines on five minute charts, you're likely to waste more time redrawing them or trying to anticipate that third point than you are to get a, time, a traditional trend line that does you any good. All right, a trend line on a daily chart is much more significant than a trend line on say a 30 minute chart. Why? Because it's held with more data. There's more trading data, as I've told you guys before, when I talked about multi time frame analysis, there's more trading data to look at. So whenever you have more data, your conclusions from that more data is more robust. The more touches on a trend line, the more important it is. I would argue that the more touches on a trend line, the more important a break of that trend line is. All right? Why do I tell you all this? Sometimes you'll be watching a financial news network or somewhere other than the presenters on Trade Zero. And you'll see somebody draw a trend line and you'll go, okay, well, he's not using traditional trend lines because that trend line doesn't have a third point. Or he has multiple closes above a downward sloping trend line and then it failed and he didn't redraw it. Okay. I'll go through the process of all of that in the future. The trend line on a daily chart, which has been tested five times, is more significant than one with only the three required points of a traditional trend line. Drawing inconsistent inconsi trend lines is one of the challenges traders have when drawing trend lines. They don't always follow the same set of rules when drawing them. Somewhere in my archives here, we have a chart that we sent out to a bunch of traders we knew with multiple, and it was a real chart, it was real price action, and it had no trend lines drawn on it. And we asked them all to draw the trend lines that they saw. And then when they sent it back, we have what basically looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. Okay, if you don't know what that looks like, Google it. There's lines everywhere because traders don't always follow the same set of rules when drawing them. Now, this happens on a lot of other chart types, especially candlestick charts. Traders sometimes include the shadows or the wicks. They sometimes ignore them. We call these kinds of trend lines best fit lines instead of trend lines because they're the best fit for the way that that particular trader is looking at them. All right, best fit lines are not as significant as traditional trend lines because not as many people have drawn them the same way. So if you're using best fit trend lines, which you guys know I use in our rotation zones, okay, you have to understand that they may not be useful to other people. All right, many aspects of a trend line providing support or resistance is due to a lot of traders having the same trend line drawn on their charts and watching for trades in those areas. It's mob rules. At the end of the day, markets are mob rules. 
which is part of the reason we try to teach you guys risk management. Because if you have one opinion and the mob has another opinion, yours won't work. Okay, if the, the mob has an opposing opinion, I should say. Here's an example of a best fit trend line. Okay, you have an initiating point down here. Then you have a little bit of a break. Then you have a confirmation here. It's got a slight break in it. Then you've got more breaks. This is more of a best fit trend line. Can't really see here, but I think there's a dramatic break here. Um, that could just be the session demarcation that's not quite opaque enough. But this is what a best fit trend line looks. And this is what somebody might draw. But at this, this trend line is not following the rules of traditionally taught trend lines. So here's the summary and the last slide I'm going to show you guys. Traditional trend lines require three points to become valid. All right. The initiating point, the validating point, and the confirming point. The more a trend line is tested and holds, the more significant it is and the higher the time frame, the more significant a trend line is. I'm going to leave this slide up and go to the chat. If anybody has any questions at this point, I left about ten eight, yeah, about eight minutes to take questions. And while I'm waiting to see if anybody has any questions, I'm going to point out that what I'm going to do next week, okay, is going to be completely different than what I just showed you. I will show you some comparisons between traditional trend lines and trade trend lines. Well, what I'm going to start to teach you is the way to draw trend lines that will trigger trades. Now, after that, I'll show you rotation zones. And then it'll be up to you guys to combine the two things. And rotation zones will also be two sessions and will also be a strategy that I use. It may not fit for what you do, but I'll show you how I use it so that you guys can say, wow, I can incorporate this into what I do or not. Trend lines for people is often uninteresting. But one of the reasons that we teach traditional trend lines is because a lot of traders go into Reddit forums or uh, they go into Discord server conversations or all these different things. And someone will say, we just broke this trend line. And you'll be able to look at that. And I would not advise that you tell the person that's not a valid trend line. You'll be able to look at it and say, this matters or this doesn't. Okay, That's part of the reason we teach it. And that is a massive part of risk management. One of the biggest things with risk management, all right, one of the biggest things with risk management is the following. Know when something is bullshit and you shouldn't be taking a trade on it. And know when something else is high probability and you should probably be taking the time to see if you have a trigger to get into something based on that. All right, there may be a market you're not even watching. I'll give you an example. Okay, the dollar index right now. The dollar index has broken one of my trade trend lines. But if I go into a forum and I say, this trend line is broken, I will have half the forum saying, that's not a valid trend line because it doesn't have three points. I'll have the other half saying, wow, I didn't have that, for that trend line, but I'm taking this trade shouldn't say the other half because now what I'm about to say isn't going to make sense. And the rest of the people who don't comment. So let me say I'll have half of the people who comment say one thing. Half of the people who comment say, uh, this is a great trade. I didn't see it. I'm going to take it. And then the remaining people will not understand whether the trend line is valid or not and whether what I'm saying fits into what they do. So that's the key here. So now you guys have all the rules or traditionally taught, okay, CTA, my, uh, Chartered Technical Analyst designation, Original Technical Analysis Bible by John Murphy, points for traditional trend lines. This is the gist of what's in it, okay? So when we get into other sections, I'm going to be referencing traditional trend lines. And saying what I'm drawing here is a trade trend line. And I'll tell you right now. In trade trend lines, we only need two points. It's an initiating point 
Sorry, I'm just hearing something in the background. Um, so in trade trend lines, we need an initiating point and a defining point. And that's all we need. We don't have a validating point. We don't have a confirming point. We have an initiating point, which lets us know that there may be a trend line involved. And then we need a defining point, which defines the very recent trend. And those two things will give us a trend line that we could potentially take a trade off of. It will also give us a target for that trade. Now, it won't give us a stop. It's very important. But with this particular thing, and I'll also introduce a concept of a clear path, right? A clear path is a, is a way of looking at a short-term trade and saying, is it clear for me to take this trade to the target? Or do I have to take some other things into consideration? Okay. It's technical analysis by John Murphy, Joan. And I believe there will be a recording here. Okay, I believe there will be. And this might be another time to put the disclaimer up while we go through about the last five or six minutes here because the disclaimer is kind of important. All right, so Hugo asks a critical question. How can we know if the trend will reverse after points four, five, six, and seven? Um, you don't, Hugo. You don't. You only know with solid probabilities that there is resistance here. How do you know when resistance will hold? You only know once it's held. Okay, so what trend line resistance or trend line support does is the same thing that any other support or resistance does. It shows you when a market held support or failed against resistance, and it shows you where you might want to put a stop above support or below resistance. Okay, so if you've held a point of a trend line, and then you have a trigger of a trade down the road. You could say, okay, this trend line held so far, so I can put my stop above the trend line on a short or below the trend line on a long. What you're trying to do is gather information, Hugo, to put together a high probability trade. If you're trying to put together a 100% probability trade, I hate to say this, but you should stop trading because you're going to lose your money because they don't exist. By the way, I should throw this out there right now. If there's people out there promising you high 90%, be very, very cautious because they're, they're, if they're not just selling outright naked puts and calls, okay, way out of the money, naked puts and calls, which is one of the only areas I know where retail traders can get that high of a probability then they're likely lying. Okay, they're likely lying. One of the best traders in history, Monroe Trout, he had trout trading, for two decades had two losing quarters. For two decades, 20 years, 80 quarters, he had two losing quarters. But he had a lot of losing days and a lot of losing weeks. And how do I know? I was one of his brokers back in the day. And a guy I went to college with was one of his chief financial officers for 10 of those 20 years. All right, this is one of the best traders in history. This trader is in Market Wizards. I think he's the one that they cite as anonymous for. They might mention his name, I'm not sure. So Hugo, you can't know. The key point right there is, how do we know? All right, that's the key phrase. So you could say, how can we have a higher probability of knowing if it will hold? And I would say that after the three points, the fourth one is more likely to hold than the seventh one is. But you still don't know. Okay, you never know. 